Hey everybody. Hi. I'm Greg. This is Aaron. We're going to talk to you about XTC CDs because, um, because it's Aaron's favorite band. It's one of my favorite bands. Ooh, it's, you have a disc falling out there. I hate to see that. We don't want to damage a disc in a box set. Because Aaron was watching my, um, my CD collection discs and says, Hey, when you get to XTC, can I do that part with you? So we're going to go ahead and cover XTC early because it's an awesome band. Where are they from, Aaron? They're from Swindon in the UK. Uh, Andy Partridge, lead singer. Um, in, I think it was 1982, 83, something like that, he got stage fright. Uh, they were performing live a lot. And suddenly one day he just got stage fright and could never perform again. Ever, right? No. Uh, he's done some like live radio stuff, but never in live in a concert. He just lost it. I think that's amazing. Yeah. And so they only did studio albums, and it turned out to be just fine. Their uh, Breakthrough Watershed album, English Settlement. Oh, that's dirty. Uh, they're Settlement. all really dirty. Yeah, they're kind of dusty because I don't, don't listen to CDs anymore. <laughs> They've all been sitting around. What was their yeah. first album? Was it one of these? One of these two? Uh, their first album was uh, that one. So this one? Go to. This says uh, on the front, it's got all this typing. It says, this is a compact disc cover. It used to say this is a record album cover. And then it talks about how this is writing and the design of the cover. But this... Uh, Actually... This I think this was their first one. This is not their first album? No, I don't think so. Damn it! Sorry. <laughs> this was 78. What year was White Music? 77, apparently. Okay. And? this is They were very uh, new wave, very new wave-ish, punkish. Is that the one that's got stuff. the Hendrix cover on it? Like, all along the Watchtower? Yeah, along the Watchtower, yeah. Yeah, that's on this one, and Crosswires. And This Is Pop. This Is Pop is on this. Um, that's a great song. One of my favorite ones is Drums and Wires. I seem to have lost the CD case, but here's what it looked like. You, you really don't take good uh, care of your collection. I don't. I'm a CD slob. That's the exact opposite of a CD snob. Yeah. Um, Drums and Wires anyway. is, is a really good one. It's got Making Plans for Nigel, which is a great song you probably know. And Life Begins at the Hop is another one you might know. Primus um, covered Making Plans for Nigel. Uh, Sarah McLachlan has covered XTC's Dear God, which was their ooh. breakout uh, hit from Skylarking. Yeah, that's really good. Where's um, Since It's Working Overtime, which is one of my favorite songs, by uh, the way? That's on the, uh, the... Is it on Black Sea? No. No. Where is that one? Oh, right there. On uh, English Settlement. It's on English, English Settlement. Since It's Working Overtime. One, two, three, four, five. Since It's Working, working Overtime. Time. Yeah, that's a great song. Um, not when I sing it. But when they sing it, it's much better. The drummer, um, up at, up through this album, uh, I don't remember his name, I think it's Terry something, uh, like one of the best drummers of all time in any band ever. If you go listen to early XTC and you listen to the drumming, it's just incredible. He's this Australian dude and he just rocks the drums. But he's really not right. on their more recent albums. Now it's no. just it's just Colin and uh, and Andy. Now it's nobody. Colin uh, sort of disappeared. Yeah. Uh, Andy Partridge doesn't know where he is. Really? Um, he just kind of took off, didn't tell Andy anything, and so it's just Andy. XTC is kind of defunct now, I think. That's uh, a but shame. But Andy still makes does projects and stuff. But that's a shame because they got back together and recorded a couple new albums. Those those uh, Wasp Star and the, yeah. and, and the Apple Venus. A Apple Venus. And those are both truly excellent albums, and they came out what maybe six, seven years ago. Yeah, to to two thousand. Wow, it's already been a decade. It's been a decade since their last album. It's weird. I mean, if, if you're not familiar with XTC, I'd almost suggest that you start in reverse. I'd almost suggest that you pick up these two first. I think that um, their last album, Wasp Star, is probably their most accessible of all their albums. It is fairly accessible. Just kind of pop it on and listen to it, and, and all the songs just grab you, like from Playground and Stupidly Happy and... All those songs that just like they grab you right from mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. I'm the. I'm the I'm the man who murdered love. It's an amazing song. They're very catchy. Uh, where I started was oranges and lemons. That's also an excellent starting place. Has um, uh, uh, the mayor of Simpleton, which was a little bit of a hit back in 1989. Yeah, but this is a really good starting album. If you're not into the more poppy kind of, uh, you know, it's like less rock and roll. It's a little bit more psychedelic. Um, if you're into the more Rock and roll type yep. stuff. Start with Drums and Wires or Black Sea, which just will kick your ass. Pretty good. Wait, did Non Such come after Oranges and Lemons? I yes. think this was the, that was the next album. It's the one with the ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead. Yes. Which was also strangely covered by um, Crash Test Dummies. Yeah. With a female lead singer, uh, which was an odd uh, choice for that. 
But um, this is also a really excellent album. That's this is a good album, and this is a little diversion for XTC called The Dukes of the Stratosphere. Kind of a side project of theirs. They indulge in their uh, psychedelic roots, and uh, it's really it's really cool. I don't I'm not a huge fan of psychedelia, but I really like uh, this this album. They do some fun stuff. So we haven't mentioned Skylarking yet, but that's another one of their very best albums. I think it's probably yeah. It's considered by most to be their best album, although the production was ruined. Uh, by Todd Rundgren? By Todd Rundgren. But I, love, it. but I love Todd Rundgren. He, he ruined this album, sadly. Yeah, well, he I, took I, all I don't know if I would disagree with that. Music. I don't know if I would disagree with that. Yeah. yeah. He recorded it in a way that it just sort of like screwed everything up. All right, so we, in, the songs are still good. In sort of a random way, I think we've just covered just about all their albums, although I don't know if we yeah. mentioned Black Sea or The Big Express, two of their really early albums. Um, all You Pretty Girls, great song from uh, The Big Express. All of you pretty girls. Mummer, which is a good thing. Greg and I had a little discussion about when they re-released these from, uh, you know, they were, they were on cassette first, and then they put them on CD. They did well, they were on record first. Ridiculous thing. Well, okay, record first. Yeah. yeah. So basically record you have two sides. Time. On a record or a cassette, you have to, like, listen to half of it, and then you flip it over. You had two sides. With a CD, you have no sides. But they tried to recreate sides on a CD by putting, like, the first, you know, five songs, then putting a bunch of bonus tracks in the middle, and then putting the rest of the album. But so, if you're listening to the disc, it ruins the disc completely, because there's a bunch of sort of half-assed songs in the middle, and then they play the rest of the album. Now, I don't think that their B-sides are half-assed. I think that they're all whole-assed, because I actually really like B-sides. I think that bands take uh, more uh, chances and more risks went for their bonus tracks and their B-sides. Um... But, uh, but I agree that it's weird to break up an album and you don't yeah. get to listen to an album all the way through. The sanctity of the album completely destroyed. Hey, there's some box sets. Yes, there's lots of box sets. XTC has lots of bonus stuff. Uh, there's like a million songs on here. That's um, uh, Oh, this is the Andy, Andy Partridge uh, Fuzzy Warbles collection, yes. which are his demos. Show the cover. It's a really nice looking cover. If you go through the whole thing, there's some pretty awesome stuff on there. And there's also some shit. Yes, there is a lot of shit. But um, I, if you're not already an XTC fan, I recommend checking out. They have different phases. You might not like one of them. You might like all of them. I don't know. But they're my favorite band of all time. This is Code of Many Cupboards, which combines like sort of a best of with a whole lot of unreleased rarities. Where does XTC rank on your list, Greg? Way high. Mm -hmm. Super, super high. Yeah, they're definitely in the top thousand. Hundred. I don't know. I don't know if they'd make the top ten. Because that's, that's a pretty exclusive list. You got to make room for a lot of people, but they're they're way high. They're definitely in the top 100, top 50. Let's say that they're in the top 40, top 38 probably. Have we done enough? Oh, this is the Transistor Blast box set. This is a bunch of their BBC sessions, and all the discs have, have different colors. This is bo this is a boring video. This part you're gonna cut this part, right? No, no, I don't think so. I think this is the end of the video. This is the end? Yeah. What, like, now? Yeah, we're going to keep talking right after this point, but they're not going to hear anything after right now. now. 